The LA Times published an op-ed predicting dire darkness for the third year of the Trump presidency. As Nancy Pelosi ascends to the speakership once more, one half of Congress has the ability to resist the president all the way to 2020 as Democrats promise to block what they decry as an authoritarian agenda. President Trump is obviously neither a traditional conservative nor an ideologue, except for his immigration ultra-orthodoxy, and this suits him well to deal with the divided government. His desire to give and take from both sides could make the split houses an appealing challenge. Talking is one thing, but winning is something else entirely. And what is the key to victory at the halfway point of his first term? Well, that's very easy. Liberty. If the president adopts a more focused and libertarian agenda, he's more likely to cobble together interesting coalitions out of the chaos. There are massive chasms in both parties ripe for exploitation, and the president can use the big criminal justice reform win as a map for unearthing more legislative gold. 66% of Americans support legal cannabis, according to Gallup, and it's time for the president to speed up the slow walk to green freedom and encourage Congress to reschedule the substance, if for no other reason than to help get people off of deadly opiates. Entitlements are the biggest debt driver, and Social Security alone gobbles up a quarter of the total budget with its trillion-dollar-a-year endless appetite. Combine that with Medicare, and you've got a generation-thwarting bomb that will blow up the deficit in 10 years as people are living longer and the cost of health care continues to go up. Not because we don't have enough government in health care, but because there's too much. The president's backtracking on Syrian troop removal shows how hard and deadly it is to extricate ourselves from complex wars in the Middle East and only proves why we should never be there in the first place. He will definitely find rational consensus from both parties to scale back our commitments abroad so we can save lives and money by staying out of wars that frankly don't pertain to us. With all that money saved and all that goodwill stored, a pro-liberty agenda will keep the economy growing as the blowhards learn to grow up, cut costs, and work together toward real greatness. And that's the memo.